Welcome to Beyond Talking Points from Little Visioneers Bookstore. I'm Bridget Jackson Buckley, and today I'm speaking with Julie Conrad. Julie Conrad is an intuitive healer, medium, and transformational teacher. She is the author of Conversations in Between with My Mom in the Afterlife, and she joins us today to give us a glimpse into the afterlife. Welcome, Julie. Thank you so much, Bridget, for having me. I'm so happy to be here today. Yeah, I'm really excited to talk with you too. You know, I I love this kind of stuff. Yes. <laughs> it's so fascinating. Alignment. Yeah. <laughs> Spirit is around us and always speaking to us. So the book, this is this is, you know, a labor of love for you, right? Like yes. how long so have you been working on this book, Julie? Well, my mom passed about three and a half years ago. Um okay. and I started probably nine months after she passed, six to nine months. And it was really that she said, hey, we should share this. <laughs> and I was like, we should, which was okay. so interesting. Um, what she was telling me was changing me and softening me and healing me in such a deep way that it was like, no, all humans want to suffer less, right? And all humans have these big questions in life. And so I said, well, I don't even know what to ask you. And she said, get a pen. I said, okay. And I literally wrote down all the questions that you see in the book, other than the final few. And I wrote them as fast as I could as she talked. And then over the next couple of years, I just would ask and write the answer. But then yeah. the piece for me was how I applied it, right? Each chapter has a, an answer to a question in our conversation, but then how it changed me, how I applied it, how I see it play out in the lives of myself and clients. So it's been an interesting journey for me. I'm sure. Okay, so let's take a step back. So, you know, you just explained that so so eloquently, but it was a difficult beginning or challenging because there wasn't full acceptance of your gifts. So tell us about, I mean, like you outlined it quite a bit, how difficult it was. You want to talk about that? Sure. Um, mm -hmm. I was raised um, very strict fundamental Baptist, and it gave me such a beautiful foundation of faith and trust in a higher being. However, it's very um, narrow in its view. And there is a verse in the Bible that says not to seek mediums and psychics. But one day I woke up and I was the medium psychic and I didn't know, had a lot of cognitive dissonance. Like I didn't know how to integrate that. And I didn't tell my parents for a long time. And when I finally did, it was just like crickets. And I, you know, their response was, you should read your Bible and pray more. And yeah. Eventually the conversation came around to, I love you so much. And you led a life that you loved. They led a life of service. One was a patrol officer. My dad was, and my mom was a teacher. And I said, this is my gift. And I love you so much. And I respect your opinion, but I want to live my life because in my life review, I don't want them to say, why didn't you use any of these gifts? And mm -hmm. we just kind of agreed to not talk about it. But our relationship was so close. There was just this black hole, basically. And I mourned a lot. There's a lot of grief for me that I couldn't share these amazing experiences that I was having in my office with clients with the two people that I loved the most in the world. So, so you, so, okay. So you worked in the corporate sector. I did. And you left a successful corporate career 10 yeah. years ago now to start your energy healing practice. So how how did you even know that you were a medium or that you would do energy healing if you were working in the corporate sector? How did it come about? I was really sick when I was younger and I sought out Eastern medicine and energy healing. Once I moved to Cincinnati, I grew up in Northern Ohio and I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue at 16. It, I was young. Um, and I was suffering greatly. And when I found energy medicine and Eastern medicine, I started to get better. And it was, I would shift and be able to be high functioning. And then at 29, I actually met my mentor. Um, and when she put her hands on me, I was like, oh boy. It was like this electric shock went through me. And she looked at me and she goes, I think you're supposed to be a healer in this lifetime. And I started crying because I knew what she said. You know how when you know something is the truth? And yes. it just that cold chill feeling that like, it was just like this expansiveness in me. And I was like, I believe you're right, but I have this great corporate job and, you know, I want to have a baby and I, my life is planned in this direction. 
And she was like, I know. And so I just started studying and trusting my intuition more. And while it made zero sense to leave the job that I was in and so worldly successful, it was just this deep, I don't want to say ache, longing in my heart Mm. that just would not go away. And I don't want to make it seem like that happened and I quit. I mean, it was like six years before I made the leap, right? Because I One, I wanted to develop the skill set and feel like I really knew what I was doing. As a a Reiki master. Mm -hmm. So I became a Reiki master. And then I was also taking classes in other modalities, healing modalities. And when I finally made the decision, it was just so clear in my heart. I was, you know, how spirit will make you uncomfortable Mm -hmm. in your comfort zone. I was uncomfortable in my comfort zone to the point where I was like, I'm just going to do it. What's the worst thing that happens? I can always go back, but I never had to go back. I just kept trusting spirit one step at a time. And it's all been laid out beautifully, really. I mean, I, there, I've heard this thread in so many stories and it's Mm -hmm. also in mine, you know, when, you know, I think about your parents and you said, your mother said, just read your Bible and how, like, we all have had just this, this terror, this fear. Yeah. of really being seen, yeah. of really standing in who we are. I mean, just, it almost feels like you're like, I'm going to die, you know, if I really reveal who I am. And it's such a, um, it can be such a, what is the word? I, you know, like a challenging walk for lack of a better word, you know, when people around you that you feel like you want their approval because you love them, or at least their understanding, you know, but then it just starts to get to the point where you, you just cannot hold it in anymore. You can't hide it. Like you have to just let it out. And that seems to be happening for so many people now. I agree. Like the suppression is no more. Well, I think that's why people are so angry, right? mm -hmm. Because they're not creating from their soul. They're suppressing and anger is the energy required to make a change. And so as we see everyone being more angry, I'm like, oh, the change is coming. People are going to have to live more authentically in alignment with themselves because we can't, it's not sustainable to be, you know what I mean? Out of alignment. We get sick. We don't feel well. We have resentment. It's not that bad. Unhappy. Yeah. Unhappy. Just anxiety stricken. There's so many things that happen. And I was having a lot of that in my corporate career, increased anxiety. I was having headaches when I would go to work. I'm like, I know, like, I know I'm not in alignment. I just, I was scared. I flat out, I was scared. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm sure you are. And, you know, and the control that we, we all have tried to put in place, you know, so that we feel safe, so that we think we know, so that we have all the T's crossed and I's got it. But then it, it just when you feel the the nudge of spirit or a call, you know, or as a spiritual teacher that I love to listen to, Michael Beckwith will say, the pain will push you until a vision pulls you. Mm. You know, you feel this pain of being out of alignment and incongruent with yourself. And then finally, when you can start to become in alignment, that pain lessens. Yes. So where did the where did the mediumship come in? So you were practicing the modalities and learning. I was. I was. And then as I was practicing, I'll never forget the first time it happened. A woman like appeared through the wall of my office. And I'm used to seeing spirit guides and angels. So I am very clairvoyant. And so I was used to seeing at that layer, but this woman felt different to me. And I was it like, It was in your energy. I'm sorry, your energy yeah, it was, practice yeah, it was office for you. Okay. Energy practice. Mm -hmm. So I was giving a session, giving Reiki. And I love spirits so much because they do make me so uncomfortable until I do what they want. Right. So she just (laughs) getting closer and louder and louder. And I was like, I am not saying that. She goes, you need to say it. And I'm like, I am not saying that I'm arguing because who argues with spirit me? Finally, I just blurted out what she had to say. And the woman on the table goes, that is my mother. And I received that message as such a gift. And I was like, Okay. So then it started in my room, in my office, just where people would appear. And a while later, I said to my mentor, I go, so when people's departed loved ones who are deceased come through the room and talk, that's normal, right? And she goes, that's not normal. I go, what? I thought every healer had that experience. I didn't, I just didn't know. 
you, mm -hmm. everyone assumes their experience is what other people are experiencing, right? And so mm -hmm. she said, no, no, I don't even know how to help you with that. We should find you a mentor to help develop because it is a gift just like healing the more you do it the more you practice it you put some framework around it the better it gets and so I found Joe Scheel then um and started studying okay. him so then you had to learn how I mean because a deceased love or a transitioned loved one can come through and I would imagine the person on the table was open to that type yeah. of information but some people are not no they are not and <laughs> the good news is I usually would know it's, it's there's this deep How knowing you know? this is going to either help them or not and what i found is spirit will not come in that form if it would be contradictory to their belief system right so because do you do you have a feeling i mean you know like you when you think of someone or you're standing in physical proximity to someone you have a feel like a feeling and you're like oh, okay so do you have a feeling like that like this person is open do you hear anything um I do hear um and it is I'm very clear sentient and I think really it's just that during a healing session I'm not usually so connected I'm, I'm looking inside the person's body in their energy field in what their thoughts are what's blocking them from moving forward and healing and so I'm focused that way so they have to work really hard to get through to me. Does that make sense? Because yeah. I'm connected more this way versus, you know, out towards the mediumship role. Now mm -hmm. I offer mediumship as a service separate. Um, but yeah. back when I first started, I wasn't. And so it was like, if I kept getting the ping, it was almost like someone would tap you on the shoulder, like, hello. And then I would discern, yes, this is such a healing message for them, for this person. And a lot of times I would just start by you know, has your mother passed? Yes. How do you know that? Oh, okay. That's gentle. So it's very gentle that way. Yes, she has. And I miss her so much. I just wish I could talk to her again. Okay. Right. And then I would let spirit come through and use okay. me in that way because it does heal people in a different way than what I do with Reiki or Trilogy or the other modalities right. that I use because it's... To be connected with someone that you love so deeply after they've passed, mm -hmm. it's very healing for the grief journey, I think. And so you were not, so when the first woman appeared during the session, you, did you feel nervous at all or were you just yeah, like, oh, because I was like, I was like, I can't, this person, it was her first session on my table. I didn't know this woman at all who was laying on my table. And I thought, I do not want to seem crazy. Right? Like, aren't we all afraid of being Gosh, We always go like, to that. We always, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, this is new, you know? And so when they make me so uncomfortable, I literally start physically sweating. I can't hear anything other than them. They get so loud as they blend. I'm like, okay, I, okay, I'm here to serve. I'm just going to try it. Right? Like, I'm just going to be gentle. Um, but the message she had was so beautiful for her daughter. It was about, she said, ask her if she writes music. And I was like, do you write music? And she said, I do write music. And she goes, now ask her if she sings. I said, do you sing? And she goes, I do sing. I go, and are your songs about healing and love? And she goes, I do. And I said, your mom says that you need to record those and get them out into the world. It was like such a beautiful message. But, you know, as she kept saying, yes, I trusted and trusted and trusted, even though yes. big risk to me, you know what I mean? Like, and yeah. I know that ego right of not wanting to be wrong I've had to let go of a lot of like fear of being wrong yeah I, I get that too right <laughs> <laughs> because there's this part where you I mean it, it the information as it comes through it can feel in my experience very light yeah very subtle and so you know it's like am I making this up but then the next question in my mind is like why would I have this thought right now this has nothing to do oh, with what's going on. Yeah. okay so, yeah. so you went through that difficult period of, you know, letting your, your parents know, and then you also dealt with the trans, the actual transition of your mother. And so how did that relate to, to writing the book? And yeah, you know, I had asked her if she would come as she was passing. I said, please promise you'll come. And she looked the other way. And I, it was very painful for me, to be honest. It makes me want to cry thinking about it. And I just was like, she'll come. 
Like I just kept believing like she'll come. And I waited a month. I would meditate daily because I couldn't connect with my grandparents. My grief was just so heavy. I held my mom as she passed and what a gift, what a gift to usher another soul into the other world. And my, yeah. I could see everybody that morning waiting for her. It was so beautiful. And I said, just come get her. She's suffering so much. You know, she was nonverbal for the last 48 hours, I'd say. And I just was literally laying in bed, holding her in the last week. She was in so much pain. She had said, do whatever you can to help me. Like, just do whatever you can to help me get out. And I was like, okay. So I started running Reiki because it does help people transition. Mm -hmm. And I was holding her heart when I felt it stop beating. And at that point, it was just like, I watched her soul swoosh out of her. Everyone was smiling. And then that, like the door between the worlds, I call it just closed for me. And I just was devastated. Um, but what I felt so privileged and I wrote in the book, she died at 1144, which is so significant to me because 11 is new beginnings to me. And 44 is the angel number. And I was seeing a divorce at the same time. She died on a Thursday and I had divorce trial on Tuesday and then came home back to Mansfield and buried her. And it was just like, I needed that hope of 1144, that it was a new beginning and that I was surrounded with spirit and love and it was going to be okay. And it was, but, oh, I've not, I don't know that I've ever experienced quite so much pain until my father just passed in February and it has been painful. It was a shock. Right. Um, but she did come after a month she came and I just wanted her to say, I get you now. Right. Like that's, isn't that what we want to be seen? And what she said Mm -hmm. was, so much greater than that it was and I guess I realize it now as a mother but I didn't until she said it and that was she wanted a life for me that had made her happy right Mm -hmm. so her life made her so happy religion and its boundaries and black and white it felt so safe to her so she had yes you write about that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she just wanted to give that to me this safety and she said you are meant to be vast and not, you're never going to fit in the box. And it was so much greater than I get you, you know, Mm. to hear her say, I'm in everything and everywhere now we'll never be apart is it's like salve to my soul, you know? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And so, okay. So (laughs) from that point, you continue to communicate and you brought the pad and the paper and started to just write down messages. Wow. So when I started to write the book, I started going back through my journals. And then she said, um, it's going to be easier if you just learn to type while you talk to me. Okay. So <laughs> I learned to type while we talked and document um, our conversation. Because you can't write that fast. I, no, I, you know, yeah. it starts to look scribbly. It does. And I was like <laughs> trying to decipher my own chicken scratch. And I was like, oh, yes. I don't know. I don't know. She's like, she taught me to type. She was a business teacher. And so she used to hold a book over my hands while I would type when she taught me to type. And she goes, listen, that book is there. Just close your eyes and just type. You'll be fine. And that's oh, how wow. I know. Wow. I know. Wow. Oh my gosh. Okay. So it definitely is a book filled with vulnerability around your journey from pleasing people to being your true authentic self as a healer and medium and your grief journey and how you healed it. So what would you say was the most profound or m- most pivotal aspect that contributed to your healing? Was it your mother coming mm-hmm. through or some, or something else or all of the above? think it's all of it but I think realizing that we're never separate has been the most healing realization for me like I just don't have fear around that anymore and isn't it fear that we're trying to heal to get back Mm -hmm. to our Mm -hmm. and so living without that fear I just feel so connected to her to others on the other side to people here right it just opened me up to be able to connect in such a deeper way with people and the spirit world, really. It really does. I mean, because, you know, we're human. So when there's a transition, it's, it's, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. You know, you do, you are going to miss the person. You have the physical reminders of them and your experiences. Oh, they're not here for that. 
but it is, you know, like when my stepfather passed, I knew, I knew he was going to come through and it does deepen and he did. And it does deepen because I, you know, you can just, you can reach out to them, you know, like, yeah. you know, you know, they're there and I don't know. It just, it just reiterates that there's so much support for us yes from the non-physical and that we we truly are not alone in any of this isn't that such a lovely reckoning like just a deep knowing that we're never alone it's uh, it's never never yeah it doesn't mean we don't have our own grief journey and miss the physical touch and a hug and a phone call to hear their voice but it does I think ease that ache you know we can cry about that and then connect to them right both are true I think yes yes wow okay so we are going to or you are going to bring through some people today do you want to talk about that a little bit sure um, what should I do <laughs> you should just join me yeah it's just gonna be fun I think um you can ask a question if you want we could start with my parents maybe I can blend with them and maybe okay. you if you have a question for the other side, they can answer. Um, we'll see. Usually they come together, but I practice evidential mediumship. So if I do bring through someone for you, that's not my parents, um, I would bring through some facts about them, you know, maybe their appearance or something interesting about them to make sure that we have the the person, right? Okay. Um, and then, and then we can ask a question or get a message. Um, but evidential mediumship kind of requires me to get hard evidence of who it okay. is. Um, and okay. with my clairvoyance, usually it's a, a physical description or something to that effect. So if we start with my parents, then we can open it up, I think, to, you know, maybe someone else will want to pop through as well. Okay. So I can ask, um, I can ask, you know, if your parents come through, I can ask like two questions and then can see sure. if yeah. someone's there for me. We, we never know. <laughs> You never know, but I'm super open. So um, okay. let me, I'm just going to take a centering breath, if you don't mind, and just, I don't. you can think of your question and um, we'll see. I'm sure I can link up. I saw them earlier when I meditated. So give me just one second. Okay. Mm. Yeah, you can feel it too. I can feel you. <laughs> Yeah, it's lovely. Yes, good. It's amazing. Our, are blended and they are here. So, um, yeah, I can see both my parents as well as some other um, people on the other side. So, is there something you would like me to ask? Oh, yes. Okay. So, I would think that if you are sensitive or intuitive, you are feeling that there is some sort of change that's coming, mm. society, societal wise, like. I feel it and I can't quite put my finger on it, but it just feels like major changes are upon us. So if there's anything that they'd like to say about that to help us stay in love and not go into fear, I'd love to hear what they have to say. Okay. Yeah. Let me just blend here. I think my mother is going to talk for a second. Um, she says that that shift that you're feeling is already begun and it is an increase in consciousness and awareness that humans are remembering their own creative power versus living in what someone else has created for them and for people to elevate to a place where love is the predominant guiding light they're going to have to create it from their own inner desires their own inner longings that they have been accustomed to suppressing to fit in um she says that this pulse that you feel is the building she says think of a wave as the the tides shift it is gradual and so she, i see the seashore she says and then the waves become stronger and they come in but it starts with just a shift from going out to coming in she said we're at the shift to coming in and 
what will be will be that people are beginning to value a deep sense of well-being as having a successful life versus constant striving and angst. Um, people are tired of suffering and yet they continue to create their suffering. And the awakening is that they are going to create peace and love and a society that is harmonious versus one based out of fear and suffering that leads their actions. It's a, it's a difference of acting in avoidance because we want to avoid pain versus acting out of love to create what we actually want to live in, which is a peaceful, collaborative society. I I'm glad we're recording this because I never remember unless I'm telling you. It's just, I, that was beautiful. Good. Thank you so much. I, I love the word like a pulse and the description of the way because that is exactly what it feels like in my body. It does feel mm -hmm. sometimes like a crescendo. You know, like what what is what is this? But yes, definitely in the midst of change and to create something harmonious and beautiful. So how then, because I am aware that we create our suffering. Mm -hmm. I have experienced that this year where I'm like, wow, my mind did a job on me. So <laughs> what is the most important thing that we can do to become aware when we're creating our suffering and to stop participating in creating our own suffering? Mm -hmm. Um it's cute they're both speaking um which i love when they talk together but they are saying it is resistance mm -hmm. when we realize that we're resisting what is then we can move into acceptance and reclaim our ability to create through thought alone <laughs> our thoughts are the precursor to anything that we create and so if we can recenter our thoughts too, and this too is okay, like, yes, this is happening. I can accept I am uncomfortable. I am uncomfortable. Yes. It is temporary. Nothing is permanent. Then we can more quickly like move through it. I'm reminded of that saying what we persist or what we resist persists. <laughs> and yes. so by accepting, then we can recalibrate more quickly to the heart and say, this is happening, and I am uncomfortable, but it will pass. Um, they're reminding me of the chapter I wrote with my mom about heaping on, that when we begin to suffer, the mind likes to heap on the negative, and this happened, oh, and this is bad, and, and then we're labeling it all. But five out of the six things aren't actually happening right now. We're just adding to the pile, which increases our suffering. And she said, stop adding to the pile. Like, just be with what is uncomfortable. And my dad says, like, when he died, it was such a shock for me and grief. And he said, you had to just sit in it and accept that it was and that it is and that it also is good. It, it also is good. Um, in acceptance, then we can move through to um, this new thought of what is positive that is coming from our suffering, from the bad, our perceived, because nothing's really bad. It's just our perception of the situation. Absolutely, Julie. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Okay. Is there anything that they would like to share um, that we have not talked about or that I haven't asked about anything they'd like us to know like right now. Um, I believe there's a woman who wants to talk to you. All right. Um, and so they said that they'd really like to invite her. Are you okay with that? Yeah. I am. I, I wonder who that is. I don't know. <laughs> Let me just sit with her for a minute. Her energy is very... Um, it's more subtle. My obviously, I know my parents quite well energetically. So let me just sit with her. She has very um beautiful cheekbones, and her hair is um tight to her head. So um, and I see this is so interesting to me, but a pocketbook, like 
like a purse that's like a clip closed with the handle. Like I think she carried what she called a pocketbook. It's not, it's not a term I would use, but I have a pocketbook if I'm hers and I have um, some low back pain as I merge with her and I may have needed assistance walking towards the end of my life. And I feel very, um, I feel very, it's more than just loving you. I feel kindred, a kindredness to you. Okay. Um, like, uh, like a deep knowing, like we've been together in multiple lives, that kind of kindredness. Um, so I'll pause. Do you, would you understand that? And if I'm her, I'm probably only, I feel pet like I'm a petite woman like I'm not a very large woman so petite woman gorgeous cheekbones um pocketbook possibly needing assistance low back pain and I I feel like I have a hunch you know when I walk in my old age can you take any of that for someone you know in spirit I think I have an idea of who it is but I'm I'm just not sure if it's Fine, her. let me just ask her for okay. some additional okay. information <laughs> she'd like with me um, as I make the transition from my parents to her, um, let me sit with her a little bit deeper here. Um, I think I have a little bit of a tremor um, it, in my hand. I feel like I have a, tr a little bit of a tremor. I, um, I like, this is so funny. I like sweets very much. Um, like, so do I. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I have like, it's like, I want a piece of candy. Like, I feel like I have like a, a sugar coated piece of candy in my mouth. Um, it's a, it's very interesting to me. I, um, I think I smell like caress soap. <laughs> I always am so fascinated by the things that they like bring through because as I open up all my you know as I blend with her I'm opening my senses I'm like my tongue tastes sugary sweet I smell like caress like that clean soft smell okay um, I don't I just don't know Julie I don't I mean I immediately when you said a woman I thought oh I think it's but how yeah let me just sit with her and ask okay. her to you I it feels like the energy reminds me of my great-grandmother so it feels okay. grandmotherly to me yeah okay that's who I thought it was is that who you think it is yeah. when I say who are you and she's like grandma that's um, who that's that's exactly but I just was like I was like I think it's my grandmother but I yes, I think it is and it's like this feeling of like she had time for you she did yeah, I loved like in my a grandmother. Very, I loved her so much. Had, oh my God, it was so hard on this when she, Yeah, I, I spent so that, much time with her. It's this, it was more than a great, what, I think the messaging is, it was more than a grandmother, granddaughter relationship. She felt like you were a kindred spirit to her. Um, it was almost like she saw the wisdom and light in you before you realized it. Um, and in ways, I feel like she thought of you as her equal, even though she was your elder, um, like intellectually matching and spiritually and just this. And she says it was an energetic match, like okay. of deep love, like you had a deep yeah. with her, which is I, I absolutely so did. Um, because that's not what I hear from a lot of grandparents. Like it's a like grandparent grandchild relationship, but this is, di it's different. It feels different in the way that you related to one another um, at a soul level. Like it was a soul connection. Um, and it feels like she was, um, when she departed, it left a huge void for you of who you went to, to talk to. Like, I think she was your person that you would we talk. were just we were devastated as a family I mean it was it was devastating to us I can see why she's such a sweet soul like we still energy. talk about her yeah she's so gentle like what a gentle spirit she was and is I mean oh my gosh I feel I feel I don't know I feel like I can feel her now like, I believe that yeah of yeah. course so my job is just to be a bridge 
for you to connect to her so that you can feel all her love pouring through me into you. It's quite lovely. I it's feel lovely. it. That's I'm why sorry. I kept going like this because I was, I yeah. had a change in how I was feeling like, wow. She's oh. very loving and very wise. I believe she gave very good advice. Very mm -hmm. calm woman, like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, just good listener. Her personality is very, um, I just find her calming, her energy calming. Like, I think as a child, you would have liked to borrow her aura because of the calm. You know, children don't have That's their own amazing. aura, they borrow an adult. And so I think you probably spent a lot of time sitting next to her or on her lap. Or I after. did. Because her aura was so familiar and calming to you. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. Because, and I'm very calm. You are very calm. I'm very calm. And it's like, yeah, I spent so much time with my grandma. Yeah, I think you learned that from her. That was her gift to you to develop ah. that coding in you as a child, really. Like your energies match so, so well, to be honest. I think that's that kindred spiritness. You know, she, wow. that was her okay. you, she says, okay. but you brought her so much joy. Yeah, so much joy. She says that those are such sweet moments in a lifetime um it and she says that your light lights up the world she said you kept it in a corner a long time hidden and now oh. it's so big and it makes her so happy that's yeah. true yeah what a lovely message yeah she is so beautiful yeah her energy is so beautiful okay does she have any messages for my mother mm, let me ask her I don't know how I'm going <laughs> to share. I, I may just have to let her watch the recording. Yes. To guess guess who came through today? She, my mother's going to look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> oh, sweet. Um, she says that your mother was her first deep love. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. She said that it was such a deep love bond. And she said that... Um, she she's cute you know people talk about lives she said she would do it all over again even though it was hard she said she wouldn't change that she says it was hard and she was worth it everything about her made it worth it yeah she um it's such a like um profound choice I think for her the way she loved your mother like um, it feels like they had some tumultuousness um in their relationship and um she said that when she felt frustrated that it was only because she wanted better for her wow okay Okay. Well, I can it, see that with my mother and me. Okay. Yeah. It came from <laughs> such a place of deep love. Yeah. You know, and, and I think it, she says it felt like control, but it was actually love. Yeah. Yeah. And she wants your mother to remember that, that she did her best out of a place of deep love for her. Yeah. So beautiful. She is a really beautiful soul just um her color is this uh, sometimes I like to describe the color because I see them but then they merge into just color for me and it's like this um if you imagine when you blow a bubble you know through the little thing and how it's kind of shimmery but pink and blue and yellow shimmers that's how she looks so soft wow yeah oh my gosh okay well, <laughs> I'm just I'm <laughs> I'm just trying to maintain myself. Like I just wow, I so appreciate this. I I just have so I don't see her in my dreams very often. Is she like aware? Is she around us and aware of? She's very around and very okay. Aware. Um, she said that um, you've been getting other deep messages. I have. 
And so she says those are very important and that she is standing by while they're delivered. Um, okay. And she's helping with that. But it would, um, she says it would detract from the message because you would remember her, not the messaging as yes. much. And okay. so what you're getting in your dream state is crucial for your personal development and progress. And just know that she, it, it looks like this, like they create this tunnel for the dream and she's holding her hands like this, like to get it into her mind. So she's there. She just um, doesn't want to detract from the message. Okay. Thank you, Julie. That, okay. Well, just, just, I, I, I know she knows we just, we just loved her. So she does. So know. We loved her so much, Julie. Yeah, I can see why she is so loving and lovable and pass that to you. Yeah, okay. you have a lot of her energy, I do believe. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Lovely. You're welcome. Thank you for letting me share her messages with you. I'm grateful she came through. Thank you. So, <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Julie. That was pleasure. beautiful. My pleasure, truly. Julie is, oh my gosh. Julie's heart of service and talents have helped thousands of people feel more connected to their higher selves while healing the patterns that were not serving them. Julie is lovingly devoted to creating courses to help others utilize their gifts to serve the world while creating authentic lives they love. As a practicing medium, as you saw, Julie blends her energy with souls in the afterlife to bridge the spirit world with, with those who are Earthside. She is a channel for peace, comfort, and healing from the afterlife. And you can learn more at begintoblossom.com. Thank you so much, Julie. Thank you, Bridget. This was so lovely. Thank you for having me.